Welcome to this episode of The Aquarist Sedge, a podcast for home aquarists just like you. Learn more about how to keep a thriving aquarium and discover ideas and tips to give your aquarium the edge. And now, over to our host, Arthur Preston. Today we're going to get into a topic that's deeply embedded in the hobby, but so often misunderstood. The myth of the cleanup crew. Are snails, shrimp and catfish really the ultimate caretakers of your aquarium? Or are we just giving them an unrealistic job description? Let's get stuck into this by asking a simple question. What is a cleanup crew? Well, let's define what we actually mean here. In freshwater aquariums, we're usually referring to snails such as nearites, Malaysian trumpet snails and ramshorn snails, amongst many others, shrimp such as a mono shrimp and cherry shrimp, and catfish. And here we're talking primarily about the algae eating species such as Otocinclus, bristlenose plecos, and Siamese algae eaters. These animals are often sold as the so called solution to algae and leftover food. Shops will market them with lines such as this snail will clean your tank or get a pleco to keep algae away forever. But is it actually the case or is that just simply false marketing? Takashi Amano, widely respected for introducing nature aquariums and who used Amano shrimp extensively, always emphasized that cleanup crews are assistants, not substitutes for cleaning. And so it's really important to remember that the cleanup crew is an aid, they're not a miracle team. They play a biological role, but we as the aquarists remain the main caretakers. Let's have a look into this in more depth. Let's check out what cleanup crews don't actually do. Well, for starters, they don't remove waste entirely. And if we think about it, this makes good sense. We know that snails and shrimp consume detritus or algae and produce more waste in return. Although their waste is finer and easier to break down in a healthy cycle, it, it doesn't re remove the waste. Our cleanup crews don't take waste away. They just refine it and change its form. Secondly, cleanup crews can't keep up with heavy algae growth. If algae is growing faster than your shrimp or snails can graze, they will never eliminate it. For example, a mono shrimp, and you know, these are fantastic shrimp for uh, taking care of soft algae films and leftover food, they're really effective but they won't eat blackbeard algae unless they're starving. And you don't want to starve your shrimp. Number three, cleanup crews will not replace siphoning and gravel vacuuming, the, the actual manual labor required in tank maintenance. Uneaten food, decaying plant matter and fish waste will still accumulate and will release ammonia if left unremoved. An example that I came across recently a gentleman put 10 nearite snails into a plant of 200 litre tank. He wanted to take care of algae. There was a lot of soft green algae growing all over his tank. And um, you know, he believed that putting the nearite snails into the tank would sort everything out. Well, the result was that they cleaned patches of the algae. Absolutely, they did, and they did it well. But it's only where they roamed consistently. And after a month, the tank still had significant algae, which required manual removal. He had to get stuck in there and do it manually himself. Uh, the real solution to that algae problem was balance. The balance of nutrients, carbon dioxide and light. The cells helped keep it from returning too quickly, but they never completely got rid of the problem. Scientifically, detritivores such as snails and shrimp consume biofilm, decaying organic matter and microalgae. However, we must remember that their digestion efficiency is limited. What goes in will come out, just as smaller waste particles. Algae grazers often have preferences. Otocyclus, for example, prefers soft green algae and diatom algae, but they won't touch the tougher varieties. And let's also remember that no freshwater species eats every algae type. Blackbeard algae, for example, is nearly ignored by most, except for the Siamese algae eaters when they're young and hungry. When Siamese algae eaters become older, they tend to uh, go for the algae less and will eat leftover food in your aquarium. But I can tell you from my own experience that young Siamese algae eaters are phenomenal with blackbeard algae. Absolutely phenomenal. Dr. Dada Wellstead of the Wellstead Method and author of The Ecology of the Plant Aquarium emphasizes in her book that biological cleanup agents contribute to stability, but they do not replace manual maintenance. 
they are one piece of the nutrient and waste puzzle. And when we understand the feeding biology of the creatures in our aquarium, it helps us to set realistic expectations. So where then do cleanup crews actually excel in our tanks? Well, let's go back to the Amano shrimp I mentioned earlier. These are fantastic for eating decaying plant material and soft algae form on leaves and hardscape. Neurite snails are excellent glass cleaners. They scrape off tough algae without damaging glass or plants. Malaysian trumpet snails, they're great in sand substrates because as they burrow, they aerate it and they prevent anaerobic pockets from forming. Otter sinkless catfish are gentle algae grazers for planted tanks, but they do require mature tanks with stable biofilm and the presence of algae to survive. There are way too many stories of otters and um, even a mono shrimp being put into tanks that are fairly new, and within a few days or weeks, they die. And people are confused as to why would this have happened. But it's usually because the tank doesn't yet have enough biofilm for them to graze on in between feedings. There isn't enough algae to sustain them. You have to feed these fish. It's one of the other myths about cleanup crews that you don't need to feed them. Of course you do. You need to make sure that these animals have enough sustenance to keep them going. It was a good idea to rather wait for a tank to become mature before you put in animals whose job it is to assist you with keeping the tank clean. There are some issues, however, with some of these cleanup crews. One of the problems that I think many of us have experienced is a snail population explosion. And if you've ever kept ramsorn or bladder snails, you will know that they can reproduce exponentially. This isn't because they're pests, but because there's excess availability of food. So what you can't do about this is reduce the amount of feeding. You know, snail populations will self-regulate based on available food. You can remove them manually, and an easy way to do this is to take a lettuce leaf, put it in your tank overnight, in the next morning, you will find that it is covered in snails. Just remove the lettuce leaf with the snails and discard. You can also use natural predators cautiously. You don't want to put too many in your tank because they also produce waste and will add to the bioload of your tank. Animals such as assassin snails or cloud loaches are great at taking care of snails as well. Remember that snails are an indicator of nutrient and food excess. They don't cause poor water quality, they signal it. The other problem that people come across is that they will go and they'll buy some shrimp. They'll think the shrimp is going to help them to sort out uh, some of the maintenance issues in their tank. And within a couple of days or weeks, the shrimp are all dead. Now, this can be for a couple of things. Shrimp are less tolerant than fish to ammonia and nitrite spikes. So go ahead to test your water. It could be that there's a lack of biofilm and microflora. You know, shrimp graze all day and without stable biofilm, they will starve. It could be that there's some contamination from the tap water, particularly in terms of copper. You know, shrimp are extremely sensitive to copper, and even if there's an empty tank that you've now started using, it is possible that in previous uh, iterations of that aquarium, the um, copper from previous medications, for example, has leaked or leached into the silicon, holding the glass together, and that can then, of course, leach out back into the water. So, so always be aware of this as you set up a new tank. Test your water, make sure no copper medications remain, and cycle tanks with live plants before you add your shrimp. So let's now pull this all together. Cleanup crews support the ecosystem. They add biological diversity. They can assist in algae control and the processing of detritus, and they will contribute to the aesthetic of your tank and um, just the enjoyment of watching multiple creatures interact together in a community. What they will not do is eliminate the need for water changes. They will not replace manual algae removal. They will not substitute the vacuuming of your substrate, and they will not fix overfeeding or the imbalance of nutrients. George Farmer, a well-known aquascaper and author, often says there's no substitute for good maintenance. So use cleanup crews to complement your routine care, but never as an excuse to skip siphoning, do water changes, or get your hands wet in the manual maintenance of your tanks. So folks, that wraps up today's look at the myth of the cleanup crew. And we've learned that while the snails and shrimp and algae eaters are fantastic additions to your tank, they're not magic caretakers, they're helpers. And understanding this helps us respect and care for them properly. Folks, thank you for spending time on this episode today. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review to help us grow the community. If you're listening on the YouTube channel, please make sure you like and subscribe, and this will, of course, make it more visible to other uh, hobbyists as well. 
On that note, keep learning, keep discovering, keep enjoying this amazing hobby. Until next time, bye for now. That's it for this episode of the Aquarius Sedge. Please consider subscribing to this podcast so that you don't miss further episodes. We would love it if you would also rate and review the podcast as this helps make it visible to others. Until next time, keep learning and discovering and keep finding your Aquarius Sedge in this captivating and fascinating hobby.